Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at hugging face data sets and see how we can use handy data sets that are available for natural language processing right inside of the hugging face hub for use with their Python library. All right, we're going to go ahead and open this in Colab. I'm using Colab Pro Plus. You don't need that. It works just fine with Colab Free. You'll probably want to make sure that you are using a GPU. So make sure that the hardware accelerator is GPU. And we'll look at Hugging Face data sets. If you go to the Hugging Face Hub URL, you'll see all of the data sets and other things that they have really here. So you can search for a data set, like the emotion data set is the data set that we are going to make use of in this part of the natural language processing module. So here you can see what the data looks like. There's tweets, and then they were manually tagged according to what emotion the, the labeler, the person labeling these, felt that they aligned to. This is based on a paper. Uh, back in my notebook, I have a link to the paper as well, but papers with code, you can read all about why this data set was actually created. We're not so interested in why it was created, we're simply going to make use of it in this part. So I'm going to go ahead and run this part. This is at the top of really all of the modules for this class. We are using TensorFlow 2x for this, so that is good to specify that. We're going to go ahead and install Hugging Face because Colab doesn't install it by default. This takes a moment to install, so I will fast forward through this. While it's installing, you'll notice I'm also installing the data sets, so make sure that you're installing the data sets if you need to make use of them. So you can run this code here. You will probably get a different number than I did. I last ran this only a few hours ago, so let's see if there's been any new data sets added to Hugging Face, because I'm printing out the total number of data sets. So 3803, 3803 to 3832. So this, this is growing decently, decently fast. And you can see the top 10 data sets there. So these are the same sorts of data sets that you would see back here. So this is the same, same sorts of data sets that you would see over here. This just lets you programmatically be able to go and find them. I've got links to the paper. And now we're going to go ahead and load the emotion data set. This takes a moment, so I will fast forward through this. Okay, it's loaded. And just looking at the data set that we just loaded, because we loaded it into this emotions variable, you can see there's three data sets labeled in a dictionary, train, validation, and test. So when you're using a hugging face data set, it is already pre-broken into training, validation, and test. You don't need to re-separate it. That's good because it gives a very consistent break of these so that you can align to the paper and other research. But you, you can potentially put these all back together and re-split them yourself if you don't want 2,000 in each and then 16,000 in the main training set. And then you can simply run this to see one particular observation. So the label is three. And then the text is, I'm grabbing a minute to post. I feel greedy wrong. Sounds like something you might read on Twitter. We can also display the labels. So you'll see the six that we have here, sadness, joy, love, anger, fear, and surprise. So when you often plot these on confusion matrix, joy and love are often difficult for the, the neural network to differentiate. And indeed, maybe some ambiguity in labeling by multiple human labelers who actually said what they felt these tweets were doing. You can convert the Hugging Face data set into other formats. We're going to see how to convert it into pandas as well as TensorFlow. 
So here I'm setting the format to pandas and I get the values back here. I can also add the label name by using the apply. You can see that these are all now labeled and you can clearly read what they are. Having the labels in there is advantageous because then you can use PyPlot and very easily, I mean, there's other ways to do it without labeling, but you can put the labels there and you can see Joy is the most common one. Is that the same Twitter that I use? I would put political fervor as, as one of the categories myself if I, were, if I were labeling these, especially with Twitter. And now we're gonna tokenize them. We saw tokenizers from before, so we're gonna break it into the actual subwords. So we're, we're going to tokenize the entire data set. So I'm gonna run this. It's gonna download the auto tokenizer that I'm using from Distilbert. We're gonna set the format back to none because we had previously defined it to be pandas. And then we tokenize the entire training set. And then we print out two of these you can see that they have been tokenized. They begin in 101 and they end in 102, as is the case here. And there's some padding because we want them to all be encoded to a consistent size. You can also convert these into TensorFlow and we'll see that in the next section. Thank you for watching this video. And if you'd like to keep up with this course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can see all my latest videos on artificial intelligence and natural language processing.